You are a trained ECLS provider posted in Beltagadi PLC. You notice that you have a 34-year-old man who is brought into the PLC with drowsiness and difficulty breathing. So, managing the airway is your prime concern. During airway management, you should always keep in mind the possibility of a cervical spine injury. Since it is a 34-year-old male who is brought with drowsiness and difficulty breathing, you are not expecting any history of trauma or cervical spine injury. So, for any primary assessment, you have to see go through the sequence of A, B, and C. To manage this airway patient, we do require airway equipment. So let us see what and all we need to keep ready to manage this case. First of all, you need to see that you have a working suction apparatus. It could either be in the form of a foot pedal suction apparatus or a wall mounted suction apparatus. Connect it to a suction catheter. You need to see that you have a working saturation probe. Coming to the airway oxygen delivery systems, we have the nasal prongs, a simple face mask or a face mask with a non-rebreather valve and a pad, which is all these should be connected to an oxygen source. You also need to check that your ambu bag is working. You close the patient end and see that you are able to give adequate pressure without any leak. The ambu bag is connected to the mask. Coming on to the supraglottic airway devices, keep ready the appropriate sized oropharyngeal airways, nasopharyngeal airways, the supraglottic laryngeal mask airway and the definitive endotracheal tube appropriate size ready. To perform endotracheal intubation, you need to see that your laryngoscope blades are of the appropriate size, connect it to the handle and see if the bulb is working and it is adequate. You need to also check that your batteries are working. It shouldn't appear that you put in the laryngoscope and the light is not adequate. So it is always good to check your batteries before, before performing endotracheal intubation. You could also use a stillet to help you guide the endotracheal tube. It should not be placed beyond the tip of the endotracheal tube. It also requires an empty syringe to fill in your pilot balloon. 8 to 10 ml of air should be inserted. You could also use a Meckel's forceps to direct your endotracheal tube in difficult airway situation. Once the endotracheal tube is in place, you need to secure it using any adhesive tape and confirm that you are in place using a stethoscope. Coming on to the difficult airway, trichothyroidotomy, which is done in complete aseptic precautions, you need to have a scalpel, a bougie, and your endotracheal tube ready for trichothyroidotomy. Coming on to the pediatric management, you need to see for appropriate sized endotracheal tubes, which is curved without a cuff. You know, need, need to see that endotracheal tubes are there uncuffed. See for the appropriate sized oropharyngeal airway. Again, check for your laryngoscope. In pediatrics, we use a straight blade. It's more easier to use straight blades in pediatric. The procedure to check for the endotracheal uh, laryngoscope is the same. Also, See that you have the appropriate sized ambo bag and the pediatric stethoscope. After you have done the ABC sequence, you also need to do your ABPU scoring system. This patient is drowsy but responding to verbal stimuli. 
If the patient was unresponsive, then you should have gone directly for a definitive airway. Since he is drowsy and responding to verbal stimuli, I will see if he is able to maintain his airway. To maintain a patent airway, you need to do triple method. Here, we do a head tilt and a chin lift. You are doing the head tilt with your dominant hand, turning the head backwards and a chin lift with your left hand. This maneuver is done in patients where there is no cervical spine injury. Along with this, you could give a jaw thrust. You place the index finger behind the angle of the mandible and try to lift it up. By this triple maneuver, you are trying to open up the airway. If you are still unable to maintain airway potency, you are going to inspect the oral cavity to see for any secretions and you are going to perform a gentle suction to remove any secretions. You are performing gentle suction. You are going to connect a pulse oximeter to see for the oxygen saturation. You could, based on the saturation, you could decide on your oxygen delivery devices. Either nasal prongs, simple face mask or a face mask with a non-rebreather valve and a bag attached. So you could give a higher concentration of oxygen. When you are using oxygen delivery devices such as nasal cannula, the maximum flow that you can keep is up to 4 litres. When you are using a simple face mask, keep a minimum of at least 5 litres. You could go up to a maximum of 10 litres. But the FiO2 would not go beyond 0.6. If you are planning to give FiO2 of beyond 0.6, use a non-rebreather valve with a mask connected to flows 10 to 15 litres. Despite the triple manoeuvre, if you are not able to maintain airway, you could either use an oropharyngeal airway or a nasopharyngeal airway. Calculating the size of the nasopharyngeal airway, you see that the tip is at the nostril and the other tip is at the angle of the mandible. You insert it bevel facing towards the septum, direct it downwards. By this maneuver, you have tried to open up the airway or you could use an oropharyngeal airway. Size is determined by the tip from the center of the mouth to the angle of the mandible. To insert an oral airway, you face the airway upwards and after bypassing the tongue, you rotate it 180 degrees. By these upper airway devices, you have tried to maintain a patent airway. Despite the triple maneuver, the patient is having difficulty breathing, has abnormal breaths or no breaths, then you give assist breaths using a bag and a mask. The bag mask ventilation is performed by holding the mask on the face with one hand using the easy clamp technique. You also provide a chin lift and a jaw thrust. Mask should cover both the nose and the mouth. The rate of ventilation required for an adult is 10 breaths per minute after connecting the bag to oxygen supply. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. For the EC clamp technique, you are placing the index and the thumb as a C on the body of the mask and pressing it firmly downwards. For the E, you are placing the middle finger on the chin, ring finger on the body of the mandible and the little finger at the angle of the jaw and trying to lift it. This is your EC clamp technique. Suppose there are two people, you can hold the EC in both the hands and the pers second person will be giving the breath, one breath every six seconds. For effective ventilations, you also need to observe that the chest is rising with each breath. You give a breath, count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000 breath. So every 6 seconds you are giving one breath. That becomes 
10 breaths per minute. Watch for visible chest rise. Despite all these measures, a 34-year-old man is not having spontaneous efforts. You cannot go on bagging him for long. So now, let us use supraglottic airway device, the laryngeal mask airway. Pick the right size of LMA. Lubricate the LMA using lignocaine jelly. Hold the LMA like a pen and insert it with the cuff facing upwards. Slide the LMA over the hard palate and insert till you get resistance. Remove your index finger and inflate the cuff. For a 3 size LMA, you are going to be inserting around 30 ml of L. Connect the ambu bag and watch for chest rise during ventilation. The rate of breath would still remain one breath every 6 seconds for an adult. Despite putting your LMA, patient is not having any spontaneous efforts. Now he has become unresponsive. You cannot go on maintaining the patient with an LMA. You have decided to put in a definitive airway since the AVPU scale also became U. You intubate the patient using the laryngoscope. And the appropriate sized endotracheal tube is passed. Once the black mark is beyond the vocal cords, you remove the stillet and inflate the cup. The approximate size for an adult male would be 21 to 22 at the lips and in females it could be between 18 to 20. Once you have intubated the patient, you connect the endotracheal tube to the ambu bag and see that the chest is rising. You also need to do high point auscultation. You are auscultating the right infraclavicular area, the left infraclavicular area, the right axillary, the left axillary and the epigastrium to see that you haven't by mistake put it into the esophagus. This is the 5 point auscultation for confirming endotracheal intubation. To perform endotracheal intubation, you are holding the laryngoscope in your left hand. The tip of the blade comes to the right angle of the mouth. Slowly you are shifting the tongue towards the left side. The tip of the blade is put between the valicula and the epiglottis and lifted. The lifting force is towards the foot end of the patient, not hinging on the teeth. You are seeing the epiglottis, you are seeing the laryngeal inlet and the vocal cords. Now you insert the endotracheal tube in the laryngeal inlet up to the black mark. In case you cannot intubate and cannot ventilate, you perform a cricothyroidotomy. You perform a per quick percutaneous needle procedure till you get the surgical cricothyroidotomy ready. First, you identify the membrane located between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilage by palpating the thyroid cartilage and then moving inferiorly to the first depression. For the bougie technique, you are using complete asepsis. A 2 cm vertical incision is made on the skin. Incise the membrane side, sidewards and then rotate it 180 degrees. Inside, incise on the other side. Insert your finger into the trachea and enlarge the opening. Insert the bougie. And slide the endotracheal tube over the bougie.
Remove the bougie. Inflate the tube. Confirm by ventilating. Thanks to ECLS training. We have successfully resuscitated this 34-year-old male who came with acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma. He has been intubated and the patient's condition has been explained to the patient's party and the condition has been explained to a tertiary care centre, communicated and he is going to be safely transferred to the tertiary care centre for further management. For a paediatric patient, the techniques are almost similar with the following changes. Head is big and hence to open the airway, a towel under the shoulder is placed. Or we could use a bolt. In this way, the chest is aligned to the head and the head is in the neutral position. The bag mask ventilation rate in children is around 20 per minute. It is increased to 30 per minute if it is an infant. It is increased to 40 per minute if it is a neonate. The blade used is a straight blade which lifts the epiglottis. And the tube used is an uncuffed tube. Uncuffed tube is used to avoid tracheal mucosal injury and edema. <laughs>